Imagine three different groups having a meeting in the same building at once. Wouldn't that be a chaos? Having people talking at the same time? Some of them won't even have their point head. Wouldn't it be better to have these people split into different rooms? Each group having its own auditorium to chair their meeting? Having the sales inside their auditorium talking about the sales stuff? Marketing inside their marketing auditorium talking about the marketing stuff? And having the ICT talking about their ICT stuff in their auditorium? Just think about it. Welcome to another episode of Technology for All Academy, an academy that teaches information communication technology for free. To mention but a few, we have Cisco and Microtik series, and we'll be doing other vendor series in the future. For those who don't know me, my name is Taban Makobe, the founder of Technology for All Academy. In our lesson today, we'll be learning how to configure VLANs on Microtik platforms. We have about six ways of configuring VLANs on Microtik, and today you'll be learning one of those ways. But before we can learn how to configure VLANs on Microtik, we first have to know what is a VLAN and why do we need VLANs. To really understand what is a VLAN, we first need to understand what is a LAN and how does it work. That will help us to differentiate between LAN and VLANs. A local area network is a network between two or more devices that can share information and resources. A LAN has one broadcast domain, meaning if an app message or a broadcast message is transmitted in the network, all devices except the transmitting device will receive that message. A LAN is equal to a subnet or a network, meaning if we are using 10.10.10.0/24, all our devices in our network will get an IP address from that scope. Last but not least, a LAN is not as secure as VLANs because information and resources are shared in one broadcast domain. Now, what is VLAN? VLAN stands for Virtual Local Area Network. VLANs are logical networks that we can configure inside our local area network. It allows us to have more than one subnet on a local area network, meaning a VLAN is equal to a broadcast domain, a subnet, or a network. If an app message or a broadcast message is being transmitted inside a VLAN, only devices connected to that VLAN will get that message. VLANs also play important part in security as information and resources belonging to a VLAN will only be accessed by that VLAN unless there is inter-VLAN routing in between. VLAN is a layer 2 technology also known as a 2.1Q protocol. This protocol is an industry standard, meaning it is used by all network vendors. For example, Microtik switches, Cisco switches, Juniper switches, and many more. Switches include a 4 byte tag on a VLAN transmitted frame and strip it just before it goes to an end device. Now, let's go to our topology so that I can explain using a practical example. On our topology, the ports that connect to our personal computers are called access ports or untagged ports. Access port help an end device to access a VLAN it is assigned to. End devices know nothing about VLANs. For example, if PC1 is transmitting a frame to PC2, since they are both in VLAN 10, as the frame reaches the switch port, the switch will include a VLAN tag. And before the frame can leave the switch port that is connected to PC2, the switch will strip off the frame meaning our PCs don't know that they are connected to VLANs. We also have links between our switches. So ports that connect our switches are called trunk ports or tech ports. This port allows all configured VLANs on our network to pass through, and they also help with inter-VLAN routing. 
Our focus for this lesson will be on router 2 and router 3. We also included router 1 just for the purpose of accessing Winbox. Because without the connection between our cloud and router 1, we won't be able to access the Winbox. Now, let me open my Winbox so that we can configure VLANs. I'll connect to my router 1 which has the IP address 192.168.1.1 then I'll click to connect to Roman. In order to find out more about Roman, we have a video where we talk about Roman. You can check our playlist and then you can learn more about Roman on that video. I'm going to connect to my router 2. Now that we are inside our Winbox, the first step to connect our VLANs is to configure our bridge. And how do we do that? Okay, you click on bridge tab. And then on the tabs, on the top menu, you click on bridge. Then you click your addition sign. Then you go to general tab. And then I'll give my bridge the name, which is switch one. I'm going to name it switch one. After naming my bridge, I'll click OK. The next step is to configure ports. We are going to add ports in, inside our bridge. And to do that, on our bridge interface or our bridge GUI, we go to the second tab, which is ports. We click on it and then we click addition sign again. On my topology, I have six ports that are connected, which is one, two, three, four, five, and the one that's connected to router three is is eight. So I'm going to enable all those ports. Okay. Go under general tab. Okay, it's one. Let me start with it. Click OK. Then we press add again. We keep on changing our parts. We added this one. Let's add it two. Okay. Add it three. Okay. It four. Okay. It five. Okay. Then, last but not least, Ether 8, and we click OK. When we are done configuring our ports, it's a good practice to disable the ports that we are not using. So how do we do that? Okay, in order to do that, let me go to interface. And then, as we can see, our switches eth one to eth 5 it's RS, meaning running slave. And then you can see if 6 and 7 they are running, but they are not on a sleeve, meaning they are not inside our bridge. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select if 6 and then disable it and also disable if 7. Okay, let me close my interface list GUI. The third step is to configure our VLANs. And how do we go about that? On the top menu tabs, we go and click on VLANs. And then we click the addition sign. We're going to configure one VLAN at a time. I'm going to configure two VLANs, which is VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. Now to start with VLAN 10, we go to VLAN IDs. Okay, I'll give it 10. And then we have to specify our tag ports, which is our trunk ports, and also our untag ports, which are our access ports. So in order to do that, I'll start with the tag ports, click the drop down arrow, and then my tag port on this instance is Ethernet 8, since we are working on router 2 and router 3. Ethernet 8 is my tag port and my untag port or access ports are 
Ethernet 2 and Ethernet 3. Okay. Ethernet 2, then click the drop down arrow so that we can also put in Ethernet 3. Then we click OK. And to configure VLAN 20, I'm going to click our addition sign again so that we can open the new bridge VLAN. And VLAN ID, I'll give it 20. And our tag or trunk port is Ethernet 8. And our untagged port or access ports are Ether 4 and Ether 5. And I'll click OK. We are not yet done. We are almost there. But we still need to assign ports to our VLANs. And last but not least, we will end by configuring our VLAN filtering. So in order to assign our ports to VLANs, we go to Post tab. And then we are going to assign our access ports. I'll start with Ether2. Double click it. And then I'll click the VLAN tab. Okay. And on PVID, Port VLAN ID, I'll give it 10. So that our port is assigned to VLAN 10. And click OK. And if 3, I'll do the same also. I'll assign it to VLAN 10. And Ether 4, I'll assign it to VLAN 20. And also Ether 5, I'll assign it to VLAN 20. And I'll click OK. The last step is to enable filtering so that our VLANs can work or can be enabled. And in order to do that, I'll go to Bridge and I'll double click my Bridge and I'll click the VLAN tab and tick the VLAN filtering tick box and then click OK. And with that, we are finished configuring switch one for VLANs. Now let me go to my VPCs and give them IP address. Start with PC1. To give my PC1 an IP address, I'll give the command IP 10.10.10.10 slash .10 .10 24. Enter. And I'll give my PC2 IP 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10 .10 dot 20 slash 24 enter my pc3 is in vlan 20 so i'm going to give it ip 10.10.20.10 slash 24 enter and my pc4 i'll give it ip 10.10.20.10 slash 24 enter now that i'm done giving my pc's ip addresses i'm done with switch one configuration i'll do the connection test when i'm done with the site of switch two so for my switch two i'm going to use a command line interface to configure it okay let me minimize my pieces now in order to configure switch two I'll go to my command line interface. Okay, let me go to router 3. I'm using Oracle VirtualBox for this configuration. Okay, let me just close here. To login, the username is admin. Enter. And the password is 12345678. Enter. In real life purpose, make sure that your password is strong and make sure that you don't share your password with anyone. Okay, let me carry on. So, in order for us to configure VLANs, we first have to configure a bridge. That's our first step, okay? And to configure our bridge, I'll give the command interface, bridge, add, and name. Our name, I'll make it switch to, okay? And I'll also enable VLAN filtering. 
and to enable VLAN filtering I'll give the VLAN filtering and then I'll say yes enter and the second step is to configure our ports we have to ask uh, to put ports on our bridge and to do that I'll give the command interface bridge port and I'll press enter to get into this folder or the port configuration mode and the next step I'll give this command add bridge and our bridge is switch to and then the interface ether1 enter and the second interface it's ether2 and I'll also assign it port vlan id okay pivot and I'll give it 10 by doing this I'm assigning my ethernet 2 to vlan 10 okay let me press enter and last but not least our ethernet 3 ether 3 and I'll assign it to vlan 20 and as I've said when I was configuring switch 1 it is good practice to disable the ports that you are not going to use or the ports that are not connected to an end device or anything so in order for us to disable our ports that we are not using let me get out of this mode give two double dots and then we go into interface ethernet and then enter and i'll give the command set okay ether4 disabled and i'll say yes enter okay let's go to ether5 enter and then ether6 enter ether7 enter and last but not least we'll disable our ether8 okay and i'll give my double dot so that i can get out of this configuration mode okay we did our first step which was configuring the bridge the second step was to add ports into our bridge our third step now is to configure our villains and in order to configure our villains i'll give the command interface bridge vlan enter and now that i'm inside the uh, vlan configuration mode i'll give the command add bridge and our bridge is switched to and vlan id i'll start with vlan 10 our tech port is port 1 and our untech port is ether 2 ether 2 okay let me go back to text so that i can correct what i did instead of writing only one you have to write ether so that it can take the the command if i wrote only one the command was not going to apply okay right now let's configure vlan 20 and our untagged port is ether 3 we can also give the print command so that we can see what we have configured okay let me just give it print enter and we can see there's our configuration for vlans and with this we have finished configuring our switch to let me minimize my oracle virtual box now let's open our pcs so that we can test our connection okay to test our connection we are going to use a ping command i'll start with vlan 10 and then i'll go to vlan 20 and then we'll try to ping from vlan 10 to vlan 20 and see what will happen and vlan 20 to 10 okay let me start my ping command i'm in pc1 i'll ping 10.10.10.20 enter okay let me try it again ping 10.10.10.20 enter it didn't take it because i use capital letters so the vpcs don't know about the capital letters they take a ping in small letters okay we could get to 10.10.10.20 which is our pc2 now let me pin my pc5 which is on the other switch which is on switch 2 so that we can see if we can get to vlan 10 on switch 2 okay and it's dot 30 enter and as you can see we can also get to pc5 which is on switch 2 now 
let me ping PC3 on VLAN 20 and see what will happen. 10.10.20.10, enter. As we can see, the result says no gate we found. Meaning this shows us that the VLAN is equal to a subnet, is equal to a network or broadcast, as I've said before. Okay, and let's try to ping to another site, dot 30, enter. And as you can see, still seeing the same. But then if you go to PC3 and then ping 10.10.20.20, enter. Let's see what will happen. We can see that we got connection to PC4. Now let me ping PC6, which is on switch 2. It's dot date, enter. And you can see that we can also get to PC6. Now let me try the same thing on VLAN 20. Let's ping 10.10.10.10, which is PC1, which is on VLAN, VLAN 10. And as you can see, it says no gateway found. And I know some of you may say that is because they don't have the same IP scope. So what I'm going to do, I'll change my PC3 and give it an address in 10.10.10 .10 .10 network. So now let's see what will happen. Okay, IP 10.10.10.40 slash 24, enter. And I'll save my configuration. Now let's try to pin 10.10.10, .10 which is in VLAN 10. Pin 10.10.10.10. .10 .10 .10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 10 enter and as you can see the message that we got or the feedback that we got it's host 10 dot 10 dot 10 dot 10 not reachable now let's try to ping 10 dot 10 dot 20 dot 20 and as you can see it's giving us the feedback of no gateway found so this shows us the port that is connected to pc3 is assigned to vlan 20 as you can see when i've changed my ip address to VLAN 10 address, we don't get joy in any way. We can reach VLAN 10 and we can reach VLAN 20. Now let me take it back to VLAN 20. IP 10.10.20.10 slash .10 24. Let me save my configuration. And now let's try to ping 10.10.20.20 .10 again. And as you can see right now, we can ping 10.10.20.20. .10 .20. And if I can try to ping VLAN 10, 10.10.10.10, .10 enter. You can see no gateway found. And with that, this brings us to the end of our lesson. Hope you found this lesson beneficial. And if you did find it beneficial, please share it with someone you also think can also benefit from this video. And please don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification button so that you can be notified whenever we drop another lesson. And also, if you have a comment or question, please don't hesitate to leave it. We'll get back to you as soon as possible. Love and leave you. Have a blessed day. Thank you.